time to talk Gaelic Games on Highland and in particular, an exciting weekend ahead in the conclusion to the Alliance National Football Leagues and in particular Division 1 and 2, which is the Northwest focus on. Uh, to take a look at this, I'm joined by our match analyst Martin McHugh and from the Irish News, GA writer Cahar O'Kean. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Highland once again. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Well, uh, the way it is, guys, as we know, Kerry will top Division 1 and will go to the final. Galway are promoted and down are relegated. Uh, other than that, there's a lot to be decided. Five promotions and five relegations to be decided uh, this coming weekend. Martin, it certainly does make for a for a grandstand finish to to a league, so it does. Yeah, definitely, Ash. It makes for for a great a great weekend of football, and particularly a great great Sunday of football. And uh, looking at you know, I always remember when the Premiership, the last day of the Premiership, it was always good weather, and really looking forward to it. And you'd a great occasion and everything else. And uh, I think it's going to be the exact same thing on Sunday. So just shows you you know what the league means. You know, we you know we look at the league. You have the Teams in their division that that are equal and everything else, so you have you have no hammers or anything else that that happen, you know, when the that will happen in the championship. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Suppose the big question to be asked at the weekend does does anybody want to play Kerry in the final the following weekend with the championship only a couple of weeks away? That's 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 uh, hard to know. Is any of these other teams that can get to the final against them? Do they want to play them or not? Yeah, it's a huge weekend, Kahar. It's fantastic for the league that it's going to end like this. It is, it is, and funny you were talking there. Is you know it's something we we maybe don't do very well is is market this particular weekend because sort of the the state of affairs most years where there's a lot to be decided on the final day and and we maybe don't market it all that well. You know, I suppose TG Car made a good fist at it at the weekend um, with with the hurling and and their sort of split screen idea but there's just so much going on around the country that you know it is uh, I suppose it's enthralling for for people that are interested in it um there's a there's a whole there's a whole lot to be decided whether anybody wants to be playing Kerry is another is another issue whether whether we maybe need to look at the idea of league finals um in the Titan calendar and the fact that you know hand on heart I'd say most teams probably don't want to play in them given how close they are to to championships, so uh, there's, there might be something there to look at as well. Yeah, uh, well, before we look at the top, obviously, we've got the Northwest interest in, in the form of Donegal and Tyrone. Uh, basically, it's a case that both teams need to win if they are going to avoid relegation. How big an order is that for both of the sides this weekend, Martin? Donegal have home advantage against Armagh, but Tyrone have to go to Kerry, so they do, yeah. Well. First of all, we look at it from a Tyrone point of view. If they've got down to Kerry, remember what happened them the last time they're down to Kerry, and then they went on to win the All Ireland the same year. So, you can't, uh, it it depends on what team Kerry put out. Now, you have to save if you were Jack O'Connor and the Kerry management team with the league final the following weekend, you would definitely rest players. That would you do? You would look at it from your own point of view. You're not going to worry about what any about any other county. You're preparing for the for the championship down the road and everything else. So, I feel that that Kerry will rest a lot of players, a lot of the big name players, particularly at the weekend. And uh, you know, looking at that, there you'd expect maybe Tyrone to pick up the two points down in down in Kerry. And uh, from Donegal's point of view. Oshin, you know, playing in Letterkenny, a bad record in Letterkenny and everything else. But look at the record went, or our other record went in Balbuffet the last day against Mona. And maybe it's no harm to sort out this record in Letterkenny as well this weekend. Because I know from a club point of view, all the players playing for the county love playing in Letterkenny. So the problem, so it's a big game in Letterkenny. Now, do our ma? What kind of a team are they going to come with? The fact that they're playing Donegal in four weeks' time. Would they like another shot at Kerry in Crow Park? Maybe they would. Uh, no one Kieran McGinney and that he would maybe like to have another go at them they, they were very impressive in the first game against Dublin and Crow Park so they maybe want to play Kerry again after last weekend in Crow Park and in the league final everything else what team he takes will he rest players and everything else I mean he has to have one eye on the championship game down the road as well so I think Dun Tyrone played Donegal I think maybe Carr would be far better with me with dates and everything else a few years ago in a league match and beat them and Balbuffet and then Donegal beat them in the, in the channel that game was in Balbuffet beat them in the championship in Balbuffet Later on, later on in the year, so it's it's a lot of kind of cat and mouse stuff and everything else and what's going to happen. But uh, Donegal need to win and Tyrone probably need to win to be sure that both teams are safe. So it's a it's a game maybe that particularly Donegal, the fact they're playing Armagh would have liked to have been safe before this. But yeah, they, we need the two points and please God we'll get them on Sunday. Yeah. Does Declan Boner do you think Kahar want to make a statement for Donegal in this game against Armagh, given that in three weeks' time, the so three or four weeks' time they're going to be beaten again in the Championship in Ballybuffet? I, th I think it's a game where 
where you kind of feel that Donegal are going to have to match Armagh's fire for it. Um, I mean, it probably still leads to Armagh the the Ulster semi final a couple of years ago when when they were talked up and, and and Donegal wiped them off the face of the earth that day. And um, and I suppose that set Armagh's championship ambitions back a long way that day because you sort of you thought they were getting there and then you realised that they were they were probably still nowhere near it at that point. And you know. Armagh still is as good a league as they've had. We'll, we'll feel there are definitely a lot of points to prove, one of them being um, in Balbuffet in a month's time. The, that'll be the biggest one. I think Donegal have to come at it in the sense that they're not safe, um, obviously. So you know, there'll be no softness. I, I can't see Armagh taking the game soft at all. I think Kieran McGinney will want to lay down a bit of a marker in one way. He'll also want to learn a fair bit in terms of who picks up, you know, if Michael Murphy plays on the edge of the square, slightly different. You know, Aidan Forker's picked him up a couple of times when he's when he's played deeper. Um, but if Murphy plays on the edge of the square, who picks him up? Who goes on Paddy McBrady at the minute on the form he's in? Um, on the other side, you have who, you know, for, for Donegal, who picks up Ryan O'Neill? Um, you're probably looking at, at Brent McCall at the minute, like, but the, the you know, I think both managers will be looking at it. As as Martin said, one eye very much on that sort of thing, um, as to as to how individual battles go on the day. But I think, I mean, Donegal will be will be just very wary of the drop. They're 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 in a fairly precarious position there. The way the thing things sitting. Yeah, is there much to learn on Sunday for both sides, Martin? Given the fact that Ulster counties know each other so well, be different maybe if if it was side a side that you were playing down the country. I well, suppose when you look at it from our mass point of view, they started the league off very, very well. And people were saying, oh, the level of fitness was very, very high and everything else going into the first couple of games of the league. And they, they met Dublin and Tyrone. And then they had a bit of a slip off that. And you know they got back on track against Kildare and everything else. And everybody's saying that it was at the game last Sunday. They were very, very impressive against against Kerry in, in, in the athletic grounds. And the difference in them and this Armagh team, you know, they were aggressive and everything else, but, the, you know, they weren't over the top. They kept, you know, they, they controlled aggression, which which the way they play and everything else. So they definitely have improved. And you look at it, you say that that, that we look go back to that game that Car was on about there in Breffney Park that Donegal won easily in the championship game. I think from that time, you'd have to think that Armagh have improved and Donegal have gone, gone back since that there. When we look at it and Donegal are going to be short, uh, uh, then play a few players on Sunday, and probably Armar coming with near enough a clean a clean bill of health with them and everything else. So I think I think Car is right. Kieran McGinney likes to win every game he plays. That's the that's the way he plays. But like Mickey Hart was in the past, so I think Armar will come with a very strong team. So it's a big test for Donegal, and uh, I think that as we looked at it from from the marking point of view, that'll be the big one. Looking forward to the championship and everything else. Can you get the edge on on the on that other player? And can you know the likes of Brent McCall? You know, did a great job on Kieran Kilkenny last week. Can he do the same job? On Ray and O'Neill and everything else. I know Kerry dropped Morley back as a sweeper in front. It'll be important who Donegal drop in that role in front of him, in front of him and everything else. So yeah, it's going to be a bit cagey and everything else. But from Donegal's point of view, they need to win the match, and that's the most important thing. And whatever way you have to win it, you have to win it. From Armagh's point of view, you know it's not the end of the world if they don't win the win the match. But they would they would probably like to still. You know, won it and go go into the into the game in four weeks' time and get a league final, which is definitely going to help them Armagh players in another game in Crow Park. And and looking at it from the point of view of going into going into the Donegal game on on a fair high and giving them confidence, considering exactly what Cara said about the hammering they got the last time they played Donegal, so they definitely want to put that to bed. And uh, Cara, just on Tyrone, would it be the end of the world if Tyrone lose and and Kerry at the weekend and end up end up in Division Two? I think recent history tells us it's not the end of the world for Tyrone, given that they've been in Division Two twice in the last seven or eight years, um, and and done all right out of it. I think reached an All Ireland semi final out of it in uh, 2014, 2015, whatever year it was. They 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 were a bit precarious in the All Ireland semi final. Um, you know, I don't I don't think it's the end of the world for them. I think they I think it was on with Yoshi in the start of the year, and and I, and I said that. I you know, expected Tyrone to start slowly and, and could be in a wee bit of relegation bother come the end of it. I don't think there's anybody really too surprised at how their league campaign has, has sort of panned out for them. Um, they will be keen to avoid it. I suppose Gary will probably rest a few players, Martin's right, but Killarney has not been a... a, a or Kerry in general has not been a happy hunting ground for 
for Tyrone. I think their last five visits, the average defeat is 12 points, like average margin of defeat is 12 points. So, you Listen, know, Claire, they, is, is Jack O'Connor going to look at the All Ireland champions who are coming here and we have an opportunity to relegate them? Is that a big enough incentive for Jack O'Connor to go, you know what? I, yes, we've got a league final coming up, but it'll be another game before the championship. Will they go at it full pelt? There's definitely a we, there's definitely a wee, but he, the idea of relegating the All Ireland champions certainly. I think Kerry will still be very hurt by the All Ireland semi final last year, you know, on the on the circus that was around it and then the way that the game went and you know, they I'm I have no doubt that they would very much feel that they left the game behind them with the chances they missed and David Clifford going off injured then the normal time and different things like you know, Kerry will be looking at it very much. Again, you know, how much of a marker do they they need or want to put down? I would I would imagine that they'll They'll probably want to put something on Tyrone at the weekend, and the idea of really getting them probably does probably does interest Gary a wee bit. All right, um, I don't I don't foresee a wholesale change. I, I think you'll maybe you'll get you know if you have Sean O'Shea back in, depending on what way he is, you might still look at the like of Jack Savage getting a wee bit more game time, or you know things like that. Maybe Killian Spillane getting a wee bit more game time, or. You know, I, I, I don't see beyond that. I don't see them going wholesale changes. Um, and it just it makes it makes it a very tricky assignment for Tyrone. Yeah. Uh, Martin, I know after the, the Mayo game um, earlier in, in the year, uh, we did, of course, um, see Donegal um, in their opening match. And at times there was questions. And Donegal since then, of course, have, have picked up... Uh, Two victories. We got a draw along the way, Martin. Of course, in our camp- campaign, and you did say at the end of it that that could be a, a crucial point. Could that be the point in Sunday that keeps Donny going Division One? Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully it is. As as they say, you know, I, I still I don't agree with Carol and Kerry. I, I believe that Jack O'Connell will, in my opinion, rest players. I think that would be the sensible thing for Kerry to do. I mean, remember last year, Tyrone went down and they annihilated them in the league and we saw what happened in the championship. So I, I, I'd be shocked if he doesn't now. Maybe maybe he's looking at it that there, there's such a rivalry between Tyrone and Kerry that they'll want to relegate them or put them in that position and everything else. But I think Tyrone or Kerry are looking at one in the National League and maybe the bigger picture down the road. But from Donegal's point of view, we should have got the two points that day. I suppose looking at now, we had the six points. He's still wouldn't be safe anyway in the league. You still would have to nearly get at least a draw against against our man Sunday. But I think look, look at it from Donegal's point of view, it's been an up and down league. You know, there's been some good performers and some very poor performers. And I suppose that's what the league's about. But sometimes in the league, and maybe it's, it's a good position to be going into in Donegal, that we have to get a victory on, on, on Sunday. Sunday's a good way to, to go into the league, the last game of the league, because other teams are going into and they don't know, do we want to play Kerry in the final? We don't know what we, what kind of a team we want to put out. Is it Some teams looking at it as, as, like, as a challenge game because it doesn't really matter. Because we look at Mayo, from Mayo's point of view, Oshin, they are they are looking at, I think it's, 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 if they get to the league final, it's two weeks in that league final, they play Galway, and that's a massive game for both teams, a situation. So, because Galway are, are are out, they're going to be out in the league final as well that weekend. So I think I think local and you, you don't want to show your hand too much early on. But from from Donegal's point of view, I think it's not a bad thing. We've got to win a game. We've got to win a game in Letter Kenny, and we've got to get out there and show what we're about. And my opinion, keep woods to the game, carry the ball as much as we can, and run at our ma. And then definitely, we saw last Sunday when we kicked high ball into into, into the Dublin full back lane, the problems we caused for them. Maybe start putting more ball in. And, and on top of the, whatever full back lanes we're playing against. But I think it's a good way to go into the last game of the league. I think even you could get beat, you could end up staying up and everything else. So from that point of view, it's a good game. But it'll be calculators all out all over Ireland on Sunday. Yeah, full live match commentary, of course, uh, from Donegal uh, against uh, Donegal this coming Sunday, of course, taking on Armagh uh, at the Adonna Park in Letterkenny. A full house, of course, expected as well. Uh, fingers crossed it's going to be a good occasion for Donegal. Cahar, what about the occasion that's going to be in Clonus? Uh, the two sides bringing up the, the end of the table, Dublin and Monaghan. Whoever wins here um, will look to be safe in, in the division. Can the Dubs continue their winning form, like what they've had over the last two games, Cahar? Or does Bante have a surprise for them coming to Clonus on Sunday, do you feel? Mm, it's, it's a strange one because... You know, you looked at the the Monaghan game against Kerry, uh, and they were I actually watched that game back, and actually Monaghan Monaghan 
played a lot better in the first half than they were probably given credit for, but they were they were dreadful in the second half. Um, and and the goals that they conceded were bad. And then then they came down and and I ended Donegal's run in Bala Buffet, and you're thinking right, well they've had their blip, and most teams in in most leagues at some stage will have a bad performance, and and you kind of thought Monaghan's was the second half against Kerry, and then they went out at the weekend. And we're, I think, fairly terrible against Kildare again. Like, and you just, you just start to wonder um, where exactly they're at at the minute. Um, Dublin, I mean, Dublin have lost in Clonus in the recent past, but just the way that things have gone for Dublin, the the upturn in the last few weeks, um, I think they would definitely, they would definitely be going there as favourites. I think most people would. Would fancy uh, a Dublin to to win that and stay up, but it's it's just a do you know? I, I think looking at it this morning, there the it, it, that game sort of just goes to prove how how sort of tight Division One has been, <clears throat> where like realistically and feasibly you could get the six points and still get relegated, and no no team has been relegated on six points for eighteen years um, out of out of Division 1 or it was 1B at that stage where Meath were relegated in 6 points so you know th- that's how tight the margins and, and it's come I suppose people will maybe say ah, Mon have dropped off a wee bit or whatever but it's not too often you get um, Armagh pushing on from a good first year Kildare have come up and done really really well as well and so you know the the gap the gap that the Monaghan might have had and the and the wee bit of a safety net beneath them of of a team being weaker than them or a couple of teams being weaker than them has has kind of disappeared and and it's everybody's kind of in the grip. I don't think Monaghan are any worse this year than they were last year. I don't think they're any better, but I think you know they, they're looking at the they have the they have the longest unbeaten run in, or sorry unbroken run in Division One outside Dublin Kerry at the minute. Um, and it, it just might be on its way out. Yeah. What about a draw on Clonus Kehar? Everybody finishing on five points goes to score difference. <laughs> just for the just for the crack. Just for the crack. <laughs> Wouldn't rule it out. Would not rule it out. Yeah, okay. Listen, before we go to division two, then um I'm gonna ask your predictions at the weekend, uh in the relegation fight, Kehar. Who who do you see going down? It's gonna be a big call. I see Monaghan. I see Monaghan probably going down. And then that leaves. To be honest, I still, I still think Tyrone are in trouble. Still right. think Tyrone are in trouble down in down in Kerry. Okay, two Ulster teams going down. What about you, Martin? Yeah, um, I wouldn't rule out Monaghan and Dublin both going down. That that they end right. up is at a, at a, hopefully Donegal are good enough to beat Armagh. I think Mayo were showing signs last weekend with the team they put out against Tyrone that they don't want to get to the league final, and if they Put out some team in Kildare are good enough to get a victory. And Kildare have probably got picked up most of their points at home. And don't think I don't know if they picked up any points away from home at all. I think they've got didn't they, they beat they beat Monaghan and they beat Dublin and they drew with Kerry and that's the five points they got. So they haven't won a game or picked up any points away from home. So this is a big one for them. But if Mayo continue to experiment and put out put out a weaker team, you expect maybe Kildare could won that. So you could have Tyrone won and Kerry. Kerry and you could have Donegal won in, and you could you could have Kildare won in, and Dublin could go down and Mon and the two teams down on, on six points. The one thing I would like to say about Dublin and I saw them last weekend, I think from number five to number fifteen or sixteen or seventeen of the players they have, I think they're the best in the country. But I think they have a serious problem from one to four. And I think that's what could end up letting them down. But from five, when they get they've they're the two smalls to come back into the team. They have uh, uh, what the two smalls come back in the team and Conor Callan. I think that's going to make them very, very strong. And some of their big players are starting to come back. So I think they're the best in the country. And I just think their problem is definitely in their full back lane and their goalkeeper. And that's for the problem now. Can they can they patch that up or not? And if they do, they're still going to be very, very hard to beat. But I'm putting them down that they're going to be relegated along with Mona. But You're no. laughing at him, Kerr. <laughs> no, not a bit, not a bit. <laughs> Yeah, we'll wait and see what happens on 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 Sunday. Uh, let's dip in quickly to uh, to Division Two, Kehar. I know you were in Bag last week. You watched Derry. It wasn't uh, the best Derry performance this year against what's looking to be a, a very very strong uh, Galway team. But uh, Derry know that they have to win uh, at Meath at the weekend and and hope that the the Tribesmen can do them a bit of a favour, Kehar, if they're going to go to the top flight. 
Yep, uh, Galway were Galway were mighty impressive. Now I have to say, in in own big, um, aside from whatever whatever performance Derry produced, I think at their best Derry would have struggled uh, with that Galway team on on Sunday the way they played. Um, it has taken it out of their hands, and I suppose I suppose the frustration. Shane McGuigan was a big a big loss against Galway, but again. The way the game went, I don't know that it would have been any significant difference in terms of the result. Um, but the big impact was was the actual sending off of Shane McGuigan down in Ross Common and then not being not being on the pitch to kick what would have been the one and three, which would have left Derry in a position this weekend where promotion was in their hands if the, if they went to Meath and won, they'd go up. Uh, and that decision is is kind of taken it out of Derry's hands completely. And you know, I suppose we can only go on the video evidence that we've seen, but. It's exceptionally, exceptionally harsh on on Shane McGuigan um, to have been sent off for for what he was sent off for. So it, it it's probably for certain in that sense. But then I suppose Rory never pulls many punches. Um, and he came out after the game on Sunday and he just said, "Look, you know, it's out of our hands. But if we weren't good enough to beat Galway and we weren't good enough to beat it or us Common, then like, that's it. That's the you know we maybe don't deserve to go up. So and that look." It's hard to argue with that synopsis either. Um, yeah. Boric Joyce, the, by the chat of him after the game on on Saturday, got the sense that he's definitely going to rest players. Um, he's definitely going to take a a chunk of his team out and and go easy at it. You know, they'd they'd be out six weeks running, including the league final. Um, now, so I would I would say that you know Ross Common will fancy it down there and if and if that happens then it doesn't doesn't really matter what Derry do in in Navin, which Navin has become a lot trickier looking in the last two or three weeks as well. You know, a month yeah. ago you were saying Derry would definitely win in Navin and now me picked up a wee bit of form and it's maybe not as clear cut on its own right either. Yeah. Um just finally then Martin will uh, nip over to Division Three. If Derry are to stay in Division Two, they could be joined by Louth, who are chasing back to back promotions under Mickey Hart. Uh, a new term agreed this week as well by the Louth GA and Mickey Hart and, of course, Gavin Devlin as well as the coach under Mickey. Uh, it's been a fantastic period for Louth football. And all of a sudden, they can find themselves from being in the bottom division to the second tier in just in just a couple of seasons. Is was why the reason Mickey Hart was brought in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's good work by the by the Louth County Board and everything else to get him, and they got him right away afterwards. There were probably a lot of counties thinking about it, but they were the first county to get him on board, and it's a massive achievement to, to do it with Louth. I mean, they were lying in Division 4 there, and they never even could get out of Division 4. And we know, you know there's massive population in Louth now, you know, with, with the likes of, of the amount of people from Dublin that have moved into, into County Louth, you know, from and commuting up and down to work. And I mean, so it's only better allows they're going to get. And I think they're actually building a big centre of excellence or maybe they have a centre of excellence built and they're to getting their, trying to get their home field sorted out and everything else. So it's great times for Louth and there's a great buzz about Louth and everything else. And it's a massive achievement to, for Mickey Hart and Gavin Devlin to, to get them to get them promoted. But I was just thinking there, Oshim and Carr was speaking about Galway, you know, they probably are a Division One team and you could you probably have nine teams there. And uh, maybe Russ Common and Derry are a bit, bit behind them in that there. But, uh, you know, we look at it. The only other thing I would say about that there is if Galway, if, if Russ Common beat Galway, they play in the league final the following week and they could meet in a championship if Galway beat Mio. So maybe Galway might want to maybe beat Russ Common and not let Russ Common not end up in a league final. They might maybe want to play Derry. I don't know. But uh, I think looking at it from the point of view, but it just shows you how competitive all divisions are. Their teams in Division 3, they're good enough to be in Division 2. And, I mean, and that's why the league is a great competition. It's a brilliant competition. The only thing is disappointing, and we talked about that early on, as you mean you, is maybe, you know, all right, this weekend is going to be great great for it, but there were other weekends it was terrible, terrible for, for football to be played. So we have our best footballers in the country maybe playing in the worst conditions. It's something we could look at maybe down the road. Yeah, something you to think about. But listen, the permutations are fascinating, guys, ahead of the final weekend of the Alliance Leagues. Uh, right across the board, there's five promotions and five relegations all to be uh, decided. We're hoping that uh, Donegal and the North West Counties won't be part of the uh, of the relegations. Uh, Carol Kane of the Irish News and Martin McHugh, as always, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks man. See you, Carol.